Chef Pennington here. Today is a super special day. We're doing Butterfinger Cheesecake Brownies. Oh my gosh, guys, this is an amazing recipe. You're going to love it. It's part of a little Coron Blue recipe I learned in culinary school and a little help from my mother. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to make a double boiler, which is just going to be some water. We're going to bring to a boil and we're going to put our bowl on top of it. But here's the key. Make sure that the water doesn't touch the bottom of the bowl or things are going to try to scorch. So we're going to put some really high quality butter. Please use high quality butter. It makes all the world a difference in everything, but particularly baking. We're going to use some really good chocolate. We're using Ghirardelli. Use whatever you guys like, but we're going to use two different types, which is going to give us a great depth of chocolate flavor. I'm going to have a link below. It's going to have all the measurements, all that kind of stuff for you. So no worries about any of that. And so we're taking the butter and we're taking the chocolate. They're very similar. They have a lot of natural fats in them. So bringing them together first is going to help us with a more homogenous texture when we're done. Use some extra large eggs. You could use a regular large, but I wouldn't really use the extra large. It's just going to make a much more moist brownie. And some brown sugar, something that usually doesn't go into a whole lot of brownies, but that little bit of molasses that you'll find there I think does help. We're going to use some Coffee. Coffee makes chocolate taste more like coffee, which a lot of you guys probably have heard that now. And it won't taste like coffee. And that's the really amazing part. You think there would be a little flavor of coffee there? Zero. All right, guys. We're baking, so we're going to use some really good quality vanilla. Everything's about good quality. This is like the Ina Garten show. She's always like, source the best of this, but if you can't, just use that, you know? Well, we're making brownies, so when we're making brownies, we want really good quality ingredients like this Himalayan sea salt. This is some of the most healthiest salt on the planet. It's got over 50 elements from the periodic table, which sounds absolutely crazy, but it does. So it's super healthy. Who thought salt would be healthy? I use some local um, honey there. I really like using local honey. It's good for your allergies, things like that. It's just, if you're going to buy honey, get local. It's just the way to go. Cake flour, guys. If you've never used cake flour, it's essentially all-purpose flour with a little cornstarch. It's going to create a lighter texture. Really amazing if you guys have not used it. It's really cheap, so look for that in your grocery store. When we add the flour in here, we're going to do it in stages. We're going to do three different stages, and that's going to really help us not get any lumps. And please sift it like I did. You don't want to bite into a brownie and have a piece of flour. That's just gross. But each one of these ingredients, one of the keys is making sure that you mix each one in after you add it. You don't just get to add everything at once and mix it together. That's no bueno. And make sure that you get all of it. So what's going to happen is this is going to bake in the oven. And once it's done, we're going to actually cut it in half and we're going to put the cream cheese in the middle. So this is a regular spring form pan I'm using here and I'm getting the air bubbles out right now just by tapping it around. And before it goes in, you plop it down at least one good time. And please put it on a tray because you never know what happens with these spring form pans. They can come undone pretty easily. Odds are good you're going to be fine, but definitely put it on a tray. So 350, 350 degrees until it's done. Everybody's oven's a little different, but it's roughly 35 to 45 minutes. So you really got to keep an eye on it. One of the things is you stick a, a toothpick in there. It'll show you how done it is. And a little tip is it's going to have a little bit towards the bottom of your toothpick. If it's all the way clean, your brownies are actually overcooked. I know it sounds weird, but it's going to come out of the oven. It's going to sit a little bit, and it's going to continue cooking a little bit. So this is Mexican caramel, guys. This is amazing stuff you can get in the grocery store these days. And I absolutely love it. It's better than normal caramel. Um, so keep your eye out for it. But we've got an eight, pa eight ounce packet of cream cheese in there. It's room temperature. Please make it room temperature. Just as you start doing your brownies, just let it set out. and It'll be good by the time you're ready to go. And here's the butterfinger part of it. I learned this from my Aunt MC. Vanilla wafers, guys. It's really interesting. But between the caramel and the texture and the flavor of the vanilla wafers... It's just going to be the most amazing brownie you guys have ever eaten. It's really going to be high up there. I tested this after I made these the first time I took them to friends, and they all just devoured, and they're just looking at me like, what did you do? I'm like, the Cordon Bleu recipe, you guys, and my mom, how could we go wrong, right? So don't overcrush the vanilla wafers. You want a little bit of texture in your cheesecake. Like, this is sounding so great, because it really is, and I'm going to have to make this again really soon. Just watching the video doing this is just making me hungry again. So we have an amazing no-bake cheesecake, which is the cool part. Once this is done, all we got to do is stick it in the refrigerator and let it set up a little bit. So cut it in half. You can see that mine did not turn out beautifully perfect, but the end result is beautifully perfect. As far as, you know, it, it not aesthetically, but everyone makes little mistakes. So I didn't cut through perfectly. I didn't let it cool off enough. That's what happened there, if you're wondering why that happened. 
I got a little impatient and I went a little quick and I made a mistake, but the end result was still equally just as delicious. So I like to just cut off the edges just so everything would look more uniform. I add a little more of the caramel and some pecans and guys, it's so good. I hope you guys enjoy this. Come join us on social media. We'd love to have you guys over there. All the links will be below. There's going to be a recipe card below. All the measurements, everything you guys could possibly need and a shareable link. And you guys have the best. Take care.